Realize your dark side, it collides inside You run as fast as you can, but you can't hide Realize your dark side, it collides inside You run as fast as you can And it's so dark and light, fight for the control Nobody knows, and it's so Oh, dark and light, fight for the control Don't anyone know, don't anyone know Money is happiness, cap Bitches got faithfulness, cap And drugs only make it worse, cap I take a perk, then I take me a nap Take a sip of the syrup when I'm trying to relax Bitch, I'm ready for what when the demons attack Hell yeah, believe that It's funny, cause I really, I wrote that song in like 15 minutes and then on the original mixtape that it was on, I didn't think that was gonna be the, like, it was just another song. I still see your shadows in my room. Can't take back the love that I gave you. I do not trust my head and my heart because I don't know which is which sometimes. Leave this shit in the past, but I wanted to last. You were made out of plastic, fake. It's like a fine line between having an influence and, like, letting the drugs, like, do you instead of you doing the drugs. Like, Cause it's so easy to get over consumed and shit. And I don't care what nobody says, it's, it's easy to get over consumed in weed. It's freestyle, it's not nothing pre-planned. It's really coming from my heart, you know what I'm saying? It's really coming from my subconscious and like really, it's coming from deep type shit. You found another one, but I am the better one. Realistically, doing drugs, you'll die. Like, you'll over, you, <laughs> your resistance will get high, you overdose and you over with. So like, found out he was doing more than four. Oh. Like, like a week before he passed, you know? We found out he was doing, I ain't gonna say the number, but it was a, a lot. Huge, huge number, yeah. So I get to freaking out, like, bro, what the fuck? Like, I get to telling everybody, like, man, look, we, we gotta send this kid to rehab, he's doing four pills, da 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 You don't believe what he said? What he said? He said, all right, I'll go, I'll go, but, I'm not stopping. I like it. like it's, I like doing it too much. Like I ain't stopping. Shit, crazy. Yeah. It's R. Just... R. P. That all them people that passed, bro. We gotta, we gotta live on. We gotta let them live through us. We gotta live on, though. It's, it's a wake up call, but, you know, to have a wake up call is one thing, but to apply that to your life and change your life is another. Oh, In the late 90s, the rap music industry was shook by the tragic loss of two true icons, Tupac and the notorious B.I.G. Due to the nature of the upbringing and the lifestyle that the majority of famous rappers lead, rap fans are sadly no stranger to witnessing their favourite stars have their legacies cut short. As with every generation, we've seen many greats fall and almost everyone would be able to name a rapper who we have tragically lost. However, for our generation, there are two artists that caused a shockwave like no other when they passed, due to the impact and influence they had on so many people of all ages, through their wise words, motivational outlook, and of course, most of all, inspiring and powerful music that shaped the future of the industry. Those two incredible artists are of course X and Juice World. Artists with similar styles, technical ability and diversity, but more importantly, human beings with equally as powerful views and energy that allowed both artists to create a cult fan base and a community like no one else we have seen in our generation. 999 represents taking whatever hell, whatever negative situation you're mm. in and turning it into something positive. Mm. Using it to push yourself, you know. Yeah. Now, of course, you most likely know this channel from our first video, Long Live X. So today we are finally covering the incredible rise and tragic loss of Jared Anthony Higgins, better known as Juice World. 
Well, I'm fucked up in there. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. But that was the like. Those Cushel are the characteristics of a, of a genius. Facts. So, he he, bitch. You are You're easily distracted. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Jared was born on the 2nd of December 1998 in Chicago, Illinois, where he grew up in the south suburbs. Very similar to the early years of X, Jared's father left his family when he was just three years old, leaving his mum to raise him and his older brother all on her own. His mother Carmela Wallace was heavily religious, which gives a good understanding of where Juice's good values and morals stem from. These values were one of the essential elements in making Jared so influential in his later life. However, due to his mother's religious beliefs, she refused to allow him to listen to hip-hop, which is most likely down to the extremely controversial stigma the genre had, even into the late 2000s with his affiliation to gang and drug crime. Jared instead had to settle for rock and pop music at home, which in the end only did him a favour as the combination between those two genres of music and a traditional hip-hop sound is what made his music so special and unique. Yeah, she's always been a strong contributor to just my success and just making sure I had a nice school to go to and food on my plate. We, we're we not always on the same page. I'm more of a free spirit. She's kind of conservative, but she's starting to see, like, she's starting to just let me be me, you know? It's funny how situations like that and his mother's strict rules ended up making Jarrod the man we know and love today. I'm just absorbing all, like, the music and shit I would listen to just just cramming my head with it, not really giving a fuck about school or homework or, or really anything else besides music, you know, like just that's all I cared about, so. To give an insight into Jared's incredible natural talent, at only four years old, he began learning to play the piano, where he later then went on to learn how to play the guitar and drums. And this shows he had a clear interest in music right from the start. However, as Jared grew older and naturally his mother's influence and control slipped, when he was just in sixth grade, he began drinking lean and using Percocets and Xanax. To some of us, that might sound mad. However, due to the nature of Jared's surrounding environment and where he was brought up, like many other artists of this kind, he would have been exposed to the wrong people and the wrong substances from an extremely young age. And we made that exact same point in Long Live X. When these kids grow up in these type of areas, they almost have no choice but to partake in these illegal things because they need to do this to get credibility and to fit in, to keep safe, but also just simply to have friends and people around them. I feel like majority of the people that were doing that shit was doing that shit because other people were doing it and because it was a fad and because it was talked about in songs. However, despite his incredibly early introduction to drugs, Jared has never been a gangster rapper and has actually never really been involved in any other crimes or situations and in general kept his nose very clean for an artist of this type. But naturally when Jared was spending time around drugs and the sort of people that come with that, of course he was exposed to hip hop and rap. And of course he was also finally independent enough and on his own away from his mother to listen to it without her consent. And it's quite obvious that this is the genre he fell in love with like no other. I'ma hit that bitch in the back with shit in the high low. You know how it is, ho. Every day I wake up lit though. Niggas know what it is, what it is, ho. Pull up on the scene lit like big ho. There was a green light that wasn't a big though. I smoke big gas, I smoke big blunts. Talking that shit that you ain't no none. Look at your bank, I just see twins. I got hundreds and you got one. And of course at the time, this was a genre that was massively on the rise, particularly in his area. And Jared actually claims that, yeah, the music he was listening to from artists such as Future was shaping his path and was shaping also his interest in drugs and that kind of lifestyle. Two years later, fast forward, Future drops 56 nights. The same motherfuckers that was saying we was clucks and shit is hitting our lines asking yeah. us where we was getting this shit from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, that shit was a fad, bro. People got on that shit because of music. M music is powerful, bro. And and music moves fashion. It moves, you know what I'm saying? Like, it moves culture. Like, it's powerful, bro. Mm. So drugs included. Drug is Drugs are included in the culture now, unfortunately. Yeah. And the time when music was Jared's greatest passion, Obviously, that was very important to creating the man that we all knew and loved. However, it also brought the negative side of, yeah, exposing him even further into the world of drugs. As these type of tracks are just filled with drug culture connections. And before you know it, it's literally just become like a standard part of Juice's everyday life. Like, it's just... It's one of them normal things. But either way, you couple his natural musical talent with 
a genre that he truly loves and is exposed to and around every single day and well you know what happens next i still see your shadows in my room I didn't know that many people was going to be able to relate to Harp. It, it surprised me how many people related to that song. Like in 6th grade, 7th grade, I'm hearing songs about Sip and Lean. Those are like the real influential years, I feel like, especially for like a boy. Ain't no such thing as halfway gangsters. You in them hallways, you ain't in the streets. Find out who your role models are, You what you like, basketball, football. That's like when you start kind of choosing the dreams you want to chase, damn near. In his first years of high school, Jared began to experiment with rap music and post his very first tracks onto SoundCloud simply from recording off his phone. And this brought us his very first track called Forever, which he released on SoundCloud in 2015. At this point, his name was Juice the Kid, which was quickly changed to, of course, Juice World. And that famous name was actually amazingly inspired by one of the legends I mentioned at the very start of the video, Tupac Shakur. A rapper to no one's surprise, Juice also loved and was hugely inspired by. During his incredible career, one of a few films that Pac actually made was called Juice, which was a very successful crime thriller. So the first section of Juice's name is a homage to one of the greatest rappers of all time. And that is of course coupled with the word world which was simply to indicate juice's intentions of taking over the world with his music and it's safe to say that yeah he accomplished that now don't get me wrong you can tell his quality on that first track forever is of course very low and yeah obviously the mixing is massively off however for someone's first ever track his lyrics and flow are just outstanding the way juice can piece words together with his very relaxing and soft voice is just insane and he has got to have one of the best natural voices of anyone in the history of rap two years on from that initial release of his first track forever and plenty of other experimental songs came juice's first fully produced single too much cash and this was produced by nick mira someone who is a very important figure throughout his whole career and this, of course, added that validity and that professionalism to the track, which he'd never had before. And amazingly, Nick Mira actually made beats as a favor for Juice and used to send him them on Dropbox for no charge. He would simply just send him beats because he already knew the talent that Juice possessed. It's clear that he'd seen it right from the start. And as I said, of course, this allowed Juice to take his sound and his style to the next level and put him in a professional space. And this means that people can finally start taking his music seriously because it's produced properly. After releasing a few more tracks and projects on SoundCloud, which all continue to feature his phenomenal natural talent, Juice began to gain small scale recognition and attention from scouting figures in the industry. Before you know it, later that year in 2017, he received the opportunity to join Taz Taylor's Internet Money record label. The kid in Seattle found Juice World with 200 followers. Right and help develop him to what he is now. Giving him the resources to release his first full length EP, 999, which was released on the 15th of June, 2017, featuring a little known track, Lucid Dreams. Now, of course, when we think of Lucid Dreams now, we think of one of the biggest and best songs of our whole generation. And despite it breaking out massively compared to his previous tracks, at this point in mid-2017, it was merely a fraction of what it later becomes. However, either way, even at this very, very early stage, Lucid Dreams straight away began to grow Juice's following and gain recognition across the board and in the industry. And you can really see why. This song is just a musical masterpiece. I can't think of a single thing it doesn't have and the main chorus is just so beautiful and iconic. Looking back retrospectively, there's no way it would have not succeeded. The day I wrote um, Lucid Dreams, it was, it was an ordinary day. Just regular routine, what I usually did when I was making music, I would just sit in my family room and like play um, beats on the stereo, just write to them. I had no idea that um, it would be a song that blew up. There were certain songs that I wrote that I was like, okay, this one could, this one's like gonna maybe be it, or this one's gonna maybe be it. But that was one of the ones where I just, not like downplaying it, like I still thought it was like a good song, cause I put it out, you know? But um, I didn't think it was gonna be it.
For Juice to create what is now such a timeless masterpiece like that so early in his career just goes to show that Juice isn't one of these rappers that need to spend years in the industry and years in the studio practicing and cultivating their perfect style and sound. He is just natural talent and he just has it straight from the get-go. And that's only further backed up by his very unique and incredible creative process that he utilizes in making every single track. You shouldn't feel obligated to do something because that's not doing it off the strength of your heart. Mm -hmm. That's doing it because you feel like you, you, everybody else wants you to do it type shit. And that's why it's, it's freestyle. It's not nothing pre-planned. It's really coming from my heart. You know what I'm saying? It's really coming from my subconscious and like really it's coming from deep type shit. Juice never wrote his songs. He simply created his songs by freestyling over beats. He is known as one of the best freestylers of all time and completed a one hour long freestyle on a Tim Westwood live appearance, which is unlike anything we've ever seen before. Tour bus full of bottles and models and bitches who swallow Got guns full of hollows, but you out your sorrow I'm rapping on them and the beats Cause I follow the leaders, that nigga's a beast I feel like a monster When you create a song so perfect like Lucid Dreams It's not just casual listeners you will attract So in mid-2017, Juice World managed to demand the attention of major artists Such as Wacker Flock of Flame, Southside and G Herbo But most importantly, Juice's music impressed rapper Lil Bibby so much so that he joined forces with his brother G Money to create the record label Grey Day Productions with the sole aim of signing Juice World and boosting his talent to success. Like this is the best song I heard in 10 years. I said that to everybody. And um, you know, I just knew what it was. I could like when, when I heard that song, that's when I got excited. Like, I'm making calls now. I'm like, Cole Bennett. I hit Cole, man, it's this kid, you gotta. Da, da, da. And this has got to be one of the best scouts and recruits we have ever seen, when a few months later in December 2017, the three song EP, Nothing Different, was dropped. And of course supported by Grade A Productions, and this EP featured the since iconic track, All Girls Are The Same. I admit it, another hoe got me finished, broke my heart, oh no you didn't, fuck sipping, I'ma down a whole bottle, hard liquor, hard truth can't swallow, need a bartender. Put me out my sorrow, wake up the next day, ain't no money caller with a new woman, tell me that she from Philly and she love women. A portion of this track's success is down to a lyrical lemonade blog post that expanded Juice's reach to a much wider audience and gave him verified from a respected voice in the industry. However, this type of exposure wouldn't have happened without the support from Grade A Productions, creating just another point that furthered the bond Juice had with his label and of course, Lil Bibby. But obviously, it goes without saying, the musical quality didn't disappoint either. And the biggest portion of this track's success has to go to Juice's incredible performance. At this point, he's just going from strength to strength and it's just so clear that this guy has the ability to make generational hits and it's becoming very clear to many people that Juice World is the future of music. And of course, this is a very significant moment because this was also the track that first allowed Cole Bennett to discover Juice World. And of course, the two of them went on to create some of the most iconic and most viewed music videos of our generation. Just two months since the blog post, Cole directed a full music video for All Girls Are The Same, which was released in February of 2018 and now has over 200 million views on YouTube. This gives a glimpse as to the popularity and size of the song which has allowed it to be relevant over the years and still to this day, All Girls Are The Same is an iconic track that sits on most people's playlists. It features perfectly crafted melodies and lyrics based on relationship issues and past loves that can easily be related to by most people, which is an element that Juice's music really relied on right from the earliest stages of his career. And once again, Juice had not only impressed his fans, but continued his industry takeover. Following the release of the impressive All Girls Are The Same music video, along came Interscope Records, who gave Juice an offer that he simply couldn't refuse of $3 million. Overnight, Juice World had become a multi-millionaire and his career had only just begun. And I, I was just waiting for the what was best for me. And so we, you know, we were, we went to a few labels, you know, had a couple, yeah, had a couple meetings and shit, and that was what felt the best. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the best deal. So, how could we refuse? That was a three million dollar deal, right? Three million dollars. That felt good too. Man, 
<laughs> Damn, I pissed myself. You hear me? <laughs> now, to most people, the turning point would be signing a $3 million record deal. But if you haven't noticed by now, the rise and the story of Juice World is far from normal. We are talking about a truly special artist here. So the turning point actually comes shortly after, on the 4th of May, 2018, with the official single and video release of Lucid Dreams. That masterpiece of a song which we previously spoke about, combined with a mainstream push and mainstream press from Interscope Records, allowed Lucid Dreams to peak at number two on the US official billboard and become one of the most streamed songs throughout the whole of 2018. But most importantly, made Juice World a household name across the globe. And the crazy thing is, Lucid Dreams has just never stopped. To this day, it has over 1 billion streams on Spotify and is up there with some of the most well-known songs in the history of music and is one of the few songs that has hit a milestone so big. His billboard success didn't end with Lucid Dreams, with All Girls Are The Same and his following single, Lean With Me, also entered the billboard amongst elite competition. These three highly successful singles featured on his debut full-length project, Goodbye and Good Riddance, that was released through Interscope towards the back end of May 2018. This iconic project also provided his first feature track, Wasted, with fan favourite Lil Uzi Vert. This track and the rest of the album continued his lyrical themes of love and drugs. She do cocaine in my basement. I'm a doctor, but I'm running out of patience. I believe that I don't have any type of patience. So that's why I kind of used the line, I'm a doctor, meaning I have drugs, but I don't have patience. A few months later, this project was followed by a bittersweet, unexpected two-track EP called Too Soon, which did bring more beautiful music from Juice. However, it was dedicated to the tragic loss of fellow legends Lil Peep and X. This emotional EP was dropped just a day after X's tragic passing, so you can tell how raw and current the emotions Juice displays are, especially with the track Legends, which was incredibly powerful, and this is shown by its entrance into the US billboard and its general effect on the whole industry. And the track has even more of a meaning today, for obvious reasons. Juice claimed that despite not seeing eye to eye with X on certain views, they would always keep in contact, and it's clear that Juice massively respected him, like most of the artists in the industry. Um, really, what I could, you know, we weren't really the closest of friends. We had a couple of deep conversations, you feel me? But, and like, you know, regardless of seeing eye to eye or not, he always had advice from his point of view. Mm -hmm. He always had advice from his point of view. It was always some advice. It was never putting me down, never none of that shit. Like, it was always positive. It was always advice. Of course, this track and this EP only added to how well-known Juice World was at the time, and he really was becoming one of the most well-known names in the industry and was really beginning to get to the top of his game. And of course, that is when the big features roll in, and that just takes it to yet another level. After featuring on Travis Scott's astronomical album Astro World, Juice fulfilled one of his greatest dreams by creating a collaborative album with rap legend Future, one of his greatest musical inspirations. The only other collaborative album Future had taken part in at the time was with Drake, so that just goes to show the level Juice was at during the back end of 2018. The lead single Fine China was the most successful and impressive song from the project, however overall it was a strong release with both artists collaborating perfectly. Around this time, Juice also became incredibly close with Ski Mask, who was long-term best friends with X before he passed. They both shared similarities in many ways, leading them to referring to each other as evil twins, which was claimed to be the title of a joint project in the works for 2019, which unfortunately we never got to see. But there was still new music for Juice in 2019, as on the 8th of March we saw the release of his second studio album, A Death Race for Love, featuring his popular former singles, Robbery and Hear Me Calling. This album topped the Billboard 200 chart and featured some very special songs that continued his love and drugs theme. She told me put my heart in a bag and nobody gets hurt. Now I'm running for 
my love, I'm not fast So I'm making it worse Now I'm digging up a grave from my past I'm a whole different person Now this project was very long, maybe a bit too long However, it clearly demonstrated the ability that Juice has of just making hit after hit with many songs on this album feeling like they could rock it to the top of the charts if they were released as a single and this is proven by the fact that a death race for love was an award-winning album that was held in massive high regards from fans all over the world and at this point juice was at the top of the game Following this album's success, Juice went on tour with Nicki Minaj, which was yet another huge success before dropping yet more Billboard singles, including Bandit with NBA Youngboy, that yet again featured themes of love and drugs, and yet again was another huge success. Right from the early stages, Juice rapped about the dark side of love, as most of his lowest points came from relationship issues as he was growing up. He eventually managed to find a stable girlfriend in Ali Lottie, who he could truly trust and rely on. They were together for a good portion of his career from 2018, so he'd draw from previous events to create his hits. Naturally, when discussing the low points of love, Juice would often touch on mental health related topics. Mental health in the black community is, that's like a, a issue. I mean, a lot of people, I, I got homies that that you know they come they come to me not saying they think they got anxiety, but I know back in the day, especially the area that I used to hang with them at, they come to their mama tell them they got anxiety. She gonna be what? We going to church on Sunday? People could really connect with the lyrics and emotions that he displayed on each track. And of course, anything that is relatable will catch on and resonate with so many people. And this is one of the main things that made Juice the huge success he was. When someone as well regarded as Juice is opening up about mental health and his struggles, it makes a huge difference to millions of his fans all around the world that are also struggling with the same sort of thing. Y'all probably heard, like, it's been a couple people that described it as this before, but Chicago is like crabs in a bucket. And, you know, motherfucker tried to get out. Everybody else in the bucket gonna do everything they can to stop that person. But I feel like us as artists, we do have an outlet to speak on shit like that and, and create awareness and change shit like that. But I feel like it only do it when the time is right. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't feel obligated to do something because that's not doing it off the strength of your heart. Mm -hmm. That's doing it because you feel like you, you everybody else wants to. However, looking back, it's clear that there were more issues than what you originally see with Juice. His mental health battles and his very early exposure, coupled with his fast rise to the top of the game, all amounted to a very serious drug addiction. Before you started getting famous though, you were probably limited on money and resources in terms of getting fucked up, and then all of a sudden you a, got too much that's money. A good thing, no? And getting fucked up is cheap. But all of a sudden... No, I mean, I feel like that's a good thing, because think about how burnt out I'd be mm. if I had the resources to get high every you know what i'm saying think about how especially you discovering something new as we've been saying throughout this video right from the start many of juice's most popular and famous lyrics and songs were mainly dedicated to drug abuse and drug addiction there's genuinely not many juice ward verses if not any that don't feature some kind of mention or reference to drugs the issue here is that juice made rap music so it was just regarded as normal because in this industry it is however in this case it wasn't just lyrics and juice world was really suffering from a serious drug addiction they weren't just lyrics they were real and sometimes when you're looking back you can almost see it as a outcry for help juice was in a serious state where the drugs were really taking over um, especially towards the back end of his career this has all become clear as recently one of the closest people to Juice, Lil Bibby, who established that relationship from his initial label Grade A Productions, claimed he began to realise that Juice was taking an abnormal amount of drugs. I found out that he was doing like four, you know what I'm saying? Four, four what? Pills. Well, what kind of pills? The, the Percocet. Percocet. So, 
So I get to freaking out, like, bro, what the fuck? Like, I get to telling everybody, like, man, look, we, we got to send this kid to rehab. He's going to perform, you know, da, 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 da. He, the rest of the guys around him, and even his mother eventually demanded that he went to rehab. I found out he was doing more than four. Oh. Like, like a week before he passed, you know? We found out he was doing it. I ain't gonna say the number, but it was a lot. Huge, huge help. Yeah. He ain't have a choice at this time, you know what I'm saying? Dude, you gotta, you know what I'm saying? You don't believe what he said. What he said? He said, what did he say? He said, um, all right, I'll go, I'll go, but I'm not stopping. <laughs> uh, okay. He said, all right, I'll go, but I'm not stopping. Like, I'll, I'll lower my dosage, da da da. But I like, like, he said, I like doing it too much. Like, I ain't stopping. It was just too late, as tragically, just a week later, on the 8th of December, 2019, Juice Ward was announced dead following an overdose from Percocet and at the time, other unknown drugs. It was later discovered that toxic levels of codeine and oxy were also present in his system, meaning Juice had taken an extreme number of drugs before his death. And this all led to him having a life-threatening seizure. Uh, of course I thought he was gonna be good, shit. I ain't never, I don't even really know, I don't know nobody that died from, you know? Well, the, uh, the rappers, I guess, but I ain't never, I thought it was good, but, but uh, yeah, you get, I don't wanna get in my feelings, but. <laughs> There's an extent to which I just hate how normal it feels to have a young rapper be so fucked up off drugs. Like, it, it just feels like we should know enough at this point that it should seem like an emergency to help them out, you know, after seeing what happened to Peep. The seizure happened during a police search once his private jet had landed in Chicago. It's said that local law enforcement agents were notified by federal agents that there were guns and of course drugs aboard the plane. This led many fans, fellow artists, and of course mainstream media to believe that the overdose happened because he took way too many drugs in an attempt to hide them from the police search. This is of course still unconfirmed, However, the people close to him, such as Lil Bibby, state that this was not the case, and it was all simply down to his severe struggles with drug addiction. They were saying, you know, in the report it said to hide them for the police when they were trying to board them. No. So that's just not true. That, that's a lie, but I don't want to talk nothing about okay. that. Okay, Yeah, I mean, that's why I read in the news, too. I never actually really talked to anybody who was there. I wonder to what extent that story is maybe different if you were to hear it. Uh, like, I don't know, it's just, it seems kind of so silly to just take a bunch of pills when it's like, if you were really getting busted with a bunch of illegal stuff, like whether you knew about it or didn't know about it, a couple of pills is nothing, you know? Like, when you have 70 pounds of weed and a bunch of guns and all this, whatever was on that plane, you know, a handful of perks is not gonna make a dent in the case. In my opinion, the saddest part is that Juice was totally aware of the negative effects of drugs. The fact that they could easily kill you and ruin aspects of your life. But despite this, he still continued to abuse them as his addiction just simply took over. Yeah, man, I know, man. I'm sorry. Da -da -da. I'm just dealing with anxiety. and da -da -da. I said, bro, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> what is, I got anxiety too. What are you talking about, bro? Like, like I be stressed out too, bro. Like, boy. He, but look, on top of that, on anxiety, but you don't do no drugs though. So I got anxiety and I'm doing the drugs. I said, well, bro, stop doing the fucking drugs then. What the fuck? Like, stop doing that shit. It's easy for you to say. Da -da -da. I said, bro, 
Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why you just can't stop doing the shit? Yeah. Like, that was the last real talk that we had. If you've got to this point, then it's clear that you will agree. Juice World was incredibly talented and intelligent. And there's countless interview snippets where he talks about the dangers of drugs and of course whole tracks dedicated to this issue such as legends in that exact track one of the primary lines is about fellow rappers peep and axe not making it past 21 years old which once again adds to the tragedy when you realize that juice was so aware of this but couldn't beat his addiction and died at 21 years old i feel like it changed everybody's outlook right but it's like for the people that was really doing that shit, it was before it was a fad. Like, it was before yeah. it was cool. So it's not as easy as saying it's not cool anymore and then hopping off of it because at this point you're addicted. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, damn, let me work towards decreasing my shit until I'm off of it. In an interview with No Jumper, Juice talks about making sure we allow rappers like X to live on and the exact same response has been shown for himself. Since Juice's death, we've not only seen many people mourn for him, but also seen many people celebrate his incredible talents and take his teachings forward. Of course, one of the main names here is the Kid Leroy, who was a prodigy of Juice and has since gone on to create incredible music that shows clear inspiration from his mentor. But, you know, I guess shit, at the, at the end of the day, like, that is what it is now. And like I said, that was my big brother, so, um, I know, you know, he wouldn't want us to slow down or, mm. or stop. And uh, but for sure, though, it was definitely like, like two weeks. Uh, I was just, you know, very like thinking about shit, and we just put everything on pause and just because mm. like shit, that was a big, that was a big thing for not just us but for the whole world. So yeah, it definitely. Um, but yeah, it was shit. You just it's a tragedy, really. You just gotta keep moving and you know keep his legacy alive and and i believe his music will be around forever so oh that's a fact yeah. yeah but we've also been lucky enough to receive some incredible posthumous releases from his team and family including many feature appearances and verses but most notably a full studio album called legends never die which we previously reviewed, and it's safe to say that it's an incredibly special, emotional, and heartwarming project that will allow people to remember Juice World and his legacy forever. Despite it being stacked full of incredible music, it can be a tough listen for his fans, with songs such as Righteous heavily talking about the drugs that killed him and his battle with addiction. He also specifically talks about dying from drugs in that track, which adds to the tragedy of him simply being unable to stop himself even though he really did know the dangers. It's rumoured that there's more unreleased music on the way, but I really hope they don't try to use music that is too unfinished like what we saw with X, as his family released some music that is clear he would never want out and was far from ready for release. So of course, the death of Juice World has been yet another tragedy in the rap game and the rap industry and especially for us fans and i'll be honest making this video doing the research repeating some of these lines now and, and in particular watching the interviews has been tough um and it's always hard making this type of documentary i mean i remember long live x was an incredibly emotional sort of production from me and joe um and this is this is no different really it's just it's yeah, it's been tough to make, and these are tough videos to make. To be honest, it just makes you feel so shit. Not just that, you know, Juice World is gone, but when you look at the bigger picture, that yet another legend has been taken from us. That's the shittest part. Like, the fact that we've lost yet another legend that could have gone on to make even more phenomenal music and would have gone on to be in one of the greatest of all time in everyone's opinion. Whereas, obviously, at the moment, it's only in the opinion of the people that were lucky enough to appreciate his music at the time, like ourselves. But like with everything, it sounds weird to say this, but we must look at the positive side of this situation. And that is simply that we were lucky enough to experience this incredible guy's music. We were lucky enough to be around and involved in the industry and listening to this genre of music at the same time that Juice World was alive, and X, and Peep, and Pop Smoke, and everyone who we've lost. So most of all, it is our job and our duty as rap fans of this generation 
to allow Juice's legacy and music to always live on. At the end of the day, we're always going to be playing his songs. We're always going to be telling our kids, our grandkids and everyone that we know how good this guy's bloody music was. And it will live forever as long as we do that. So may Jared Anthony Higgins, an inspirational human being that we all loved, continue to rest in peace. But the legend of Juice World will always live on. It's funny because I really, I wrote that song in like 15 minutes. And then on the original mixtape that it was on, I didn't think that was going to be the, like, it was just another song. Like, mm -hmm. Obviously, I liked it enough to put it on the project, but I didn't think that was going to be the smash. I had a song called Moonlight on the tape, and I thought that was going to be the smash. But I, I was talking to her on Instagram for over a year, but not even on no flirting shit. It was like, oh, this, this song sound hard. Keep up the good work. I know it was really hard. It wasn't no catfish though. Oh, I can tell. <laughs> I never get got. Do it when the time is right. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't feel obligated to do something because that's not doing it off the strength of your heart. That's doing it because you feel like you. You. Everybody else wants you to do it. Type shit. This man comes to the studio with his gothic girlfriend, like you know, just with the gothic nets. You know, she like real gothic. You know what I'm saying? And. He is tongue kissing her in front of all my homies. That's when I knew, like, man, this, he a star, you know what I'm saying? Cause like, I would never do no shit like that. Right. I know, like, I knew he was a star from right there. I'm like, bro, he don't care. He, he don't care what, what, what people think. You're a gift, not a curse. And I don't want to reverse it. Shout out, yeah, yeah, boys. Yeah, Bear yeah. Woods. Nojumper.com. Ain't nobody cool. Collab Shout is out. Shout out my penis. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bitch. Juice World. Juice Listen to World. him on nah, all nah, streaming nah. platforms. Make the kids some bread. Listen to Adam22's new mixtape. Yeah. Awesome shit. Follow Adam22 on Instagram and Twitter. Crack into a Corona. We're not sponsored by them, but it's a good beverage. Suck on my dick. If anybody donated any songs, don't worry. We're going to be playing them later. We're going to go my dick. play Kendama for a little bit. Rope Gang. Peace. I'm going to go play your mama.